Now that we have determined the wave function of our choice for the tight binding approximation, we will calculate the expected, uh, expectation value of the energy by taking the uh, inner product of uh, the wave function with the Hamiltonian uh, from both sides. So this will give the band structure of the orbital. So if you remember, our uh, wave function was uh, 1 over uh, square root n. So this is what we have uh, come up with. Some j equals 1 to n e to the i k dot r j phi s r minus r j for the jth ion. Uh, now, if you multiply 1 over square root n with 1 over square root n, we will get 1 over n. And then this will be a double summation from uh, for on j and m e to the i k dot uh, r j. Uh, minus rm because we're taking the complex conjugate uh, of the second uh, wave function phi s r minus rm uh, uh, h uh, hat this is our hamiltonian operator phi s r minus rj uh, the expectation value so uh, for each particular choice of m so we take the m ion uh, and we look at the sum, we, well, basically we will see that uh, it's going to be identical for each uh, choice of M. So the sum over J will yield the same result and M can take capital N different values because we have capital N different ions. Uh, we will obtain capital N equal terms. So uh, sum over uh, M will be replaced by uh, capital N times sum over J from uh, minus N over 2 to n minus 1 over 2 e to the i k dot r j and uh, the expectation value uh, phi s r uh, Hamiltonian so uh, phi s r minus r j and where did our m go well basically we choose our m to be 0 for the reference atom at position r m uh, so it doesn't matter which reference we choose so we, we take that to be uh, zero. So only the summation over uh, J remains. So we're going over all atoms. So zero uh, position is our reference atom. We go from minus capital N over 2 to plus N minus 1 over 2 uh, to calculate the expectation value. So these N's will cancel here. Uh, and we're going to have uh, basically uh, two terms here. So we can consider J is equal to zero and a j is not, not equal to zero. For j is equal to a uh, zero term, we're going to have a phi s a h hat phi s at position r. So that means our j is equal to uh, zero. And uh, for j not equal to zero, we, we will have the rest of the terms uh, basically remaining. So the j is equal to zero term will be corresponding to our localized term. Uh, so uh, the, the, the rest of the uh, contributions for n minus n over 2 to n minus 1 over 2 will only have significant contributions for j equals minus 1 and plus 1. Those are the nearest neighbors. That's because the overlap between the corresponding wave functions is uh, very, very small. It's uh, They are localized. Uh, so the, we have the localized term plus the electron tunneling contribution that is due to the overlap between uh, neighboring wave functions. So where did this come from? If you go back to this uh, wave functions here, you can see that we have uh, wave functions that are quite localized. The overlap is uh, negligible. It's very, very small. So we can only consider the nearest neighbors. So. Uh, the Hamiltonian operator is the uh, kinetic energy operator minus h bar square del square over 2m plus the potential energy operator. The potential energy is uh, periodic and it's uh, the same for all uh, ions. So we can write it as a sum over u uh, r minus rj uh, for the uh, potential energy. And so r goes through all possible uh, positions. Uh, rj goes through all possible ions. So uh, this potential energy will have a, a, a term that is due to the atom at the origin. So that's Rj is equal to zero. That's going to be U of R plus the rest of the terms, which is the potential due to all other atoms. So when we write the uh, localized term, phi S, H hat phi S, uh, 
it's going to have uh, this form basically we're going to have kinetic energy operator plus the uh, localized potential plus uh, the tunneling term uh, phi s of r u prime of r phi s of r the potential due to all other atoms but it's not the tunneling term but it's the potential uh, seen by the electron close to the ion due to the other atoms so uh, basically we have separated the potential as for the one dimensional case you can see here u of x that's our locant potential and u prime of x that's due to the potential of the uh, neighboring ions so now this term uh, the potential due to the neighboring ions uh, we can write it uh, as uh, phi s uh, star uh, u prime of r phi s d cube r so that's the definition of expectation value but i take the negative value of this and call it beta why do i take the negative value to define my beta because i want beta to be positive because the potential as you can see here uh, in the picture is negative so uh, we're going to define a positive uh, integral uh, which is minus the uh, integral of this uh, quantity so uh, we're going to have for phi s h hat phi s um, basically uh, the the integral that is due to the s orbital so that is the first part is our uh, local term uh, the local potential energy and kinetic energy operator that's the local hamiltonian that's the uh, s orbital and we have the s orbital energy and then we have minus beta which is uh, the contribution from the rest of the uh, potentials uh, the neighboring ion potentials that this electron uh, in the uh, in the s orbital sees okay and now uh, as for the second term uh, the second term uh, remember is uh, this electron tunneling contribution e to the ik that rj phi s h hat phi s r minus rj so uh, for the second term uh, we're, we're only going to consider uh, the nearest neighbor contribution so we we will have e to the ik dot r minus one phi s r h hat phi s r minus uh, r minus r minus one and e to the ik r uh, plus one phi s h hat phi s r minus r plus one okay so in the one dimensional case the position vectors of the nearest neighbors uh, choosing our reference ion at uh, r0 uh, is r minus 1 would be minus a i hat r plus 1 would be plus a i hat so for j equals a uh, one term we will have uh, phi s r h hat uh, phi s uh, of r minus a i hat so so we're going to call this the uh, overlap uh, integral gamma so that's the overlap between the wave functions of the neighboring ions and j equals minus one would give exactly the same result uh, due to uh, the symmetry so these integrals would be identical so we would have uh, in general the expectation value of the energy the s orbital energy uh, minus beta this is our um, uh, contribution from uh, the uh, the potential that we see from the nearest neighbors in the s orbital uh, and then we will have the uh, electron tunneling contribution the overlap integral minus gamma and sum over j equals minus one to plus one j not equal to zero e to the i k dot rj and for the one dimensional case e to the i k a plus e to the minus i k a will give us two cosine k a for the summation so we're going to have uh, the s orbital energy minus beta the contribution uh, of the uh, potential uh, that is seen by the s orbital electrons and then we have the electron tunneling contribution uh, minus two gamma cosine k a and gamma is our overlap integral so uh, we can write this uh, cosine k a as 1 minus 2 sine square k a over 2 so this would become e s minus beta minus 2 gamma plus 4 gamma sine square k a over 2 so we call this uh, for um, convenience e0 
the first term uh, that's including the s orbital energy the uh, s orbital electrons uh, uh, interaction with the potential of the neighboring ions the overlap integral that we call uh, e0 and then we have e0 plus 4 gamma sine square ka over 2. now we can plot this energy band uh, you can see here uh, it's going to have uh, for um, k is equal to 0 we're going to have e0 and for uh, k is equal to um, pi over a here, so that's the brilliant zone boundary, we would have a uh, sine square uh, pi over 2, which is 1. So we would get a, a bandwidth of 4 gamma. So the width of the band is 4 gamma, 4 times the overlap integral. So the greater the overlap between the neighboring atoms, the wider the band will be. And uh, this E0 value, which is ES minus beta minus 2 gamma, is less than the uh, S orbital energy. The bandwidth is proportional to the overlap integral gamma, and the greater the overlap integral, the wider the band. Now, near the bottom of the band, uh, where we have Ka over 2 small, sine square Ka over 2 will be replaced by, or sine Ka over 2, will be approximated to be Ka over 2 uh, for uh, in the limit uh, K goes to 0. So we're going to have 4 gamma uh, K square A square over 4 for the uh, energy dispersion minus E0. So that will give us gamma k square a square, which is proportional to k square. So that is telling us that it's basically the free electron energy, remember, is uh, h bar square uh, k square over 2m. So it's behaving like the free electron. It's proportional to k, uh, k square. And if I look at the effective mass of this electron at the bottom of the band, it's h bar squared divided by uh, del k square of the energy. So that's going to give me uh, from gamma k square a square, the first derivative will be 2 gamma k a square, second derivative will be uh, 2 gamma a square, so h bar square over 2 gamma a square, which will be positive because I have a positive uh, curvature. However, I see that this effective mass is inversely proportional to the overlap integral. So uh, m star is inversely proportional to the overlap integral. Uh, the greater the overlap, uh, the, uh, the easier for the electron to tunnel through, so the lighter the electron. Uh, so that means it's going to be easier for the electron to tunnel through uh, the energy barrier. Uh, so I have two important consequences. The width of the band is uh, proportional to the overlap integral gamma and the greater the overlap, the lighter the electron, the easier for the electron will be to tunnel through. And the near the maximum point, well, when, when I said k is equal to pi over a, uh, I'm going to get cosine k a equals uh, cosine pi uh, minus sine pi k minus uh, pi over a times a so uh, the, this is Taylor series expansion here this is Taylor uh, series expansion for k equals pi over a so the first term is minus one second term is zero the third term is minus cosine pi over two factorial k minus pi over a uh, square a, a square because the derivative will, with respect to k gives us an a two derivatives gives us a square so this becomes a, a minus one plus um, one over two k minus pi over a square a square so we have another a square here okay so if we write this uh, for e e minus uh, e, e, for e, e of k we obtain es minus beta minus 2 gamma and minus 1 plus a squared over 2 k minus pi over a squared the reason i have done this is i want to look at the effective mass so i take the second derivative with respect to uh, k so the second derivative with respect to k will give me minus 2 gamma uh, a factor of uh, 2 so from the uh, parenthesis squared I will have uh, a factor of 2 and 1 over 2 and a squared so these will uh, basically give me 
a negative value minus h bar square over uh, 2 gamma a square so these twos will cancel so I will find that the effective mass becomes a negative near the zone boundary okay so uh, m star is negative all right so to summarize uh, we have looked at our tight binding uh, wave function and we calculated the expectation value of the energy which gives us the electronic band structure for this orbital. And uh, in doing so, uh, we have isolated, uh, we have recognized that one of the terms includes uh, the summation uh, for uh, each atom that's giving the same value. And we have separated this expectation into a localized term, which gives us the S orbital energy and electron tunneling contribution, which is due to the interaction with the localized wave function uh, with the neighboring wave functions. And this overlap is only significant for the nearest neighbors. So we only took into account J equals minus one and plus one. And then we have uh, separated the expectation value of the energy of the S orbital uh, to the localized term plus the uh, potential energy contribution from the neighboring atoms. So the S orbital electron, uh, first of all, has the localized Hamiltonian, sees the localized Hamiltonian, and it also sees the potential energy due to the neighboring uh, atoms. So uh, we call this... Uh, potential energy contribution from the neighboring atoms uh, with a minus sign this integral of uh, phi s star u prime phi s beta uh, and uh, therefore we find that the localized term will be the uh, the uh, s orbital energy uh, es minus beta which is due to the fact that this is not an isolated atom it has uh, nearest neighbors. So I have to take into account the potential energy of the nearest neighbors. And the second term, uh, which is due to the electron tunneling contribution, uh, basically we only consider the nearest neighbors because it's only significant for nearest neighbors. And uh, we've looked at the one-dimensional case, uh, which is the easiest possible scenario we can look at. And we have uh, recognized this uh, cross term between phi s at r and phi s at r minus rj, the overlap integral, gamma. And uh, we find that the general uh, form of the uh, energy dispersion relation in the tight binding approximation would be Es minus beta minus gamma sum j equals minus 1 to plus 1, j not equal to 0, e to the ik dot rj. Uh, so for the one-dimensional case, this reduces to Es minus beta minus 2 gamma cosine Ka. And we have some important observations from this result. One, uh, the width of the band is determined by the overlap integral. So the greater the overlap between the uh, neighboring wave functions, the wider the band uh, will be. And two, we looked at the effective mass and we see that the effective mass is positive uh, near the bottom of the band and it's becoming negative near the uh, brilliant zone boundary. So this is in between minus pi over a and plus pi over a. And uh, also we notice that the behavior of the electron close to the bottom of the band is like a free electron. It's proportional to k square. So it's going to be parabolic. Uh, and uh, the the fact that we have m star inversely proportional to the overlap integral uh, basically suggests that the greater the overlap, the lighter the electron will be, and therefore it will be easier for the electron to tunnel through. So the greater the overlap, the easier for the electron to tunnel through the uh, potential barrier.